When the people at TEDMED asked me to talk about my experience breaking through the traditional constraints of being a doctor, I said, sure. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> No, really, I want to preface my talk by reassuring all of you that I'm going to try extremely hard not to break through in any other ways today. <laughs> For a long time, I thought that being a successful physician was what was going to make me happy. I devoted almost all of my time and energy towards my career. And yet, with each academic or medical accolade, I kept feeling like I had not quite arrived, like, the happiness I was seeking was still just out of my reach. Years later, my husband Scott and I wrote a song about that feeling, which I'm going to sing for you now. Being a physician requires a great deal of emotional strength. The needs of our patients and their families and our own medical teams have to take precedence over our own needs. We are taught to be givers, no matter what else is going on in our own lives. Just this past Saturday night, I was up almost the entire night taking care of a patient who had become very sick in the intensive care unit. It didn't matter that I'm eight months pregnant or that I had just worked six 12-hour days in a row and had to be back at work the next day 
or that I had been up the six previous nights with our one-and-a-half-year-old daughter who's currently teething. None of that really mattered. What mattered was that this patient needed my care and attention, and my priority was to give it to her. Nevertheless, that type of stoicism, day in and day out and day in and day out, became difficult for me over time. By the time I finished my training as a cardiologist, I felt emotionally exhausted. I began to seek out music as a place where I could show my vulnerability, a place where I could be honest about how I was really feeling. I found that making music made me feel more balanced and more at peace than I ever had before. I took my first part-time job as a cardiologist to make more time for music, thinking that surely at some point I'd go back to my real life. Fast forward seven years and I've never looked back. I now live in Nashville, Tennessee with Scott, my songwriter husband, and our daughter. I work half-time as a heart failure and transplant cardiologist, and I spend the rest of my time as a musician. When I go to a gig at night, Scott likes to say to me, Knock him dead, Sus. <laughs> and then... Bring him back to life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not boring being married to him. <laughs> Although at first I needed music to escape the pressures of being a doctor, I'm now sure that all of the practice I've had showing my vulnerability through music has made me a better doctor. Instead of suppressing my sadness at a bad outcome for the sake of being strong for everyone, I now find myself admitting how sad I feel and even crying with my patients and their families. I've found that when I show my vulnerability openly and unapologetically, that the people around me feel more comfortable showing how they are really feeling too, and everyone breathes a sigh of relief. I'm going to be vulnerable with all of you now and leave you with a song I've never performed in public before. I wrote it recently with a friend of mine in Nashville named Corby Lenker, and it was inspired by my own very unexpected journey towards my current life as a doctor and musician and wife and mother. It's called Sometimes Your Dreams Find You.
Thank you.